How's it going everyone? Welcome to another video. Today we're going to go into what you need to know about your CPU power connector. As a lot of you have commented on my motherboard connections video, and I'll go ahead and link that down if you want to see it, that you are confused about how many of these you need to plug in. As you can see, some motherboards will have just a single eight pin connector up in the top left. Some will have an eight pin and a four pin to go along with it. And others will have actually two eight pins up there at once. So which ones do you need to connect and can you get away with only plugging in one? To answer this question, let's first go through what a power cable actually delivers and how much your CPU will actually use to figure out what you need in your scenario. And this is gonna vary scenario to scenario, so you're gonna have to work with me here and check your motherboard manual and check your CPU to see what scenario you fall into. So let's go ahead and start and explain to you guys what an 8-pin connector does. So an 8-pin connector is actually a split of four pairs of pins. The bottom half is all your ground pins and the top half are all 12 volt pins. Each of these pairs can supply up to seven amps of power. Now that is your current. If we do a little multiplication here, we have seven amps per pair, we have four pairs, that gives us a total of 28 amps and take that 12 volts, multiply it by your current, which is 28 amps, and you get a total of 336 watts. Now that is the total rated power a single eight pin connector can provide. Now, if you have two eight pin connectors, simply double that. And if you have an eight pin and a four pin, a four pin is the same layout. So it would simply be half of that at 168 watts. So you can do the addition there and add up what you have in your system to find out the total power that you can provide with any amount of those plugs. The second part of this is going to be how much wattage does your CPU use? All you have to do is look on your box, see how much your CPU is rated for in watts and find out if that's enough for those plugs. And like I said, majority of you are gonna fall under this because if you look on Amazon right now, the top most popular CPUs all run at either 65 watts, 105 watts, or 125 watts. You rarely see many go above that in the normal consumer range. Until you get into the extreme overclocking ones, that you don't really have to worry about. One side note here, guys, make sure to reference your motherboard first to see which of the eight pins you need to use if you have multiple. Now, even though you don't need the full power of them, depending on the motherboard, it might require them both to be plugged in to distribute power evenly over both, or it might require one over the other if you're only gonna use a single one. So just check your motherboard manual first before you end up powering your system on. But worst case scenario, your system just simply won't power or there'll be some stability issues where it might crash. So the vast majority of you can go ahead, put one eight pin in and don't have to worry about it. But if you are curious and you want to plug in the others, you can feel free to do so as the component as the CPU will draw the power it needs. When you add in additional plugs for CPU power, you're not giving it the wattage immediately, you're just offering it the option Go ahead and plug them in because depending on your motherboard, it might treat the power differently. It can either split the power over both cables, in which case you would see less heat come off a single cable, which is always nice, or it might just use one cable as the primary and a second one as a backup in case something happens to that first connection. Now these days it doesn't really matter as most of you are probably gonna be fine with just a single A pin, but coming up in the future, there are rumors of new chips coming out that can reach up to 350 watts. And if those chips come out and you end up getting one, you will for sure need to plug in both 8-pin connectors to give that CPU the amount of power that it needs. Hope this video helped you all out. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them below in the comments. I will be there helping everyone out. And if you don't have any comments, just go ahead and leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. And good luck with your system building. I'll see you all in the next one.